So, so we must uh, go back and revisit the Hartree Fock and some of the uh, points that we want to tell, you know, I think you look at it very carefully, some practice problems I will give so that you can also, you know, prepare for your exam, alright. So I, th I think I just should go back from the beginning that you had canonical Hartree Fock equation. which gives the spin orbitals. So, that is from the beginning and you had expressions of f of r <coughs> which is the one electron part plus sum over j chi j star r2 1 by r12. How do you want to write it now? Can you somebody tell me? 1 minus p 1 2, good. 1 minus p 1 2, chi j 2, d tau. That was our first expression, okay. Then we <coughs> went to the closed shells. We just want to give a quick summary till the, this point where we expanded, so we wrote the chi j of r as phi j alpha phi j beta. So, we have n by 2 sets now instead of n, remember this was n, now we have n by 2 sets. Then we had an expression for the Hartree Fock equation which is very similar to this but only for the space orbitals. However, since there are operator eigenvalue equations, each of these eigenvalue equations gives much more than n or n by 2. Once the operator is defined, you get infinite number of eigenfunctions and eigenvalues that I want to mention either here or here. This f of r which is now in space orbital and actually I should write this f is not f of r, f of r omega just to correct it because you have spin orbitals, okay. So, this should be actually f of r omega. This particular one is just f of r. So, that is f of r is h of r <coughs> plus sum over j equal to 1 to n by 2, then phi j star R2, 1 by R12, 2 minus P12, phi j of R2, theta. all the spin orbitals you should write r and omega. So, here we are writing only in terms of r. So, the spin has been integrated. So, this becomes the canonical Hartree Fock equation for the space orbitals for the closed shell systems. After that for molecules, we expanded each of phi i of r as a linear combination of the atomic orbitals or some basis which you now call mu of r. This is a known basis. This is a basis of known functions. By projecting by expansion of this equation and then projecting by different a mu we wrote the equation which is f mu mu c mu i sum over mu equal to epsilon i s mu mu 
see me y. So, that that is your Hartree-Fock Ruthan equation. Okay, and then we gave you an expression for f mu mu, <coughs> in which in terms of the matrix elements of H, which you call just H core mu mu, okay, which is the matrix element of H in the basis of the A nu and A mu. So, H core nu mu plus, now can somebody tell? There are several expressions. You can tell in terms of coefficients, then density matrix. Yes, there are several expressions that you derive, but I think you should be able to derive one from the other. I can ask you to derive one, any one. So, tell let us okay, lambda sigma. Let us write it in terms of coefficient first, sum over i 1 to n by 2. Now, tell me in terms of coefficients c lambda. I, I right, okay, star C sigma I. See, you have the F of R here. Basically, I am taking its matrix elements uh, over new mu. You are expanding phi j. So, that j, j, instead of j, now you have told I. I have no problem. That was the dummy index. Huh. So, so, now you have lambda. So, I am doing nu. So, it should be nu first, then lambda here, right? Yes, 1 by R12, which I am not writing. Mu sigma, that is a Coulomb integral. What about factors? This factor 2 will remain or no? Where does this factor go? Yeah, this will be a factor 2 minus the exchange. Is it okay? See, just you have to just look at this expression. Okay, instead of j you have written i, that is all. And ex, you are expanding this in lambda, expanding this in sigma. So, the coefficients are coming and of course, you have a further integration over nu and mu. So, now it becomes a complete integral in this, in this was a function of r. So, it becomes a complete integral. So, that is what we have written. You can write incomplete also that is you just expand this in terms of atomic orbitals write f of r that also you can do and then later on take nu mu it is one and the same thing. Okay, So, you should be able to derive anything from anything. So, I am just saying these are my practice problems huh? some several such problems may come to write. So, you must practice properly. So, then we defined a density matrix of p mu nu, which is 2 times sum over i equal to 1 to n by 2 c mu i c nu i star. Correct? do not worry about what dummy index I am using. What is important is that this comes here, this comes later with the conjugate in this case. So, that if you write in terms of a matrix, then the matrix P is 2 times C C dagger. You know, those who are more familiar with the matrix notation that will be easier because you should be able to show this from this very easily. Okay? So, this is a column matrix, square matrix. This is also a square matrix. If you multiply C C dagger, because you can see that this is C dagger I nu, so it becomes P mu nu. So that is one way to remember how to write this in this way. I mean 2 C C dagger is much easy to remember. Okay. Then I can write this entire matrix in terms of <coughs> projection operator by summing over I. The summing over I is there. So the same expression now can be simplified with just lambda sigma, this is gone. So, now this becomes P what? So, what did I had? Remember, what did I had? 
C sigma lambda good. Good. This factor 2 goes, however, there is a factor half here. Correct? Okay. So, this becomes my expression for the Fock matrix in the A basis. Then we said that this basis is a basis which is orthonormal basis. So, we cannot actually solve this equation. <coughs> so, we went to a basis which is non a basis which is uh, this basis is a non orthonormal basis sorry. So, the basis is now an orthonormal basis which you do by a transformation mu prime as some x nu mu a nu. To make this base new basis normalized you remember that I must have x dagger S x as an identity matrix. That was a condition. Please remember each of these. x dagger S x is identity matrix. So, one of the identity, one of the matrices that we suggested was S to the power minus half, which satisfies this. Then we said how to get S to the minus half. You diagonalize S get the unitary matrix U, then you take the diagonal matrix consisting SD which is which consists of the eigenvalues and simply do back transform. So, that is your S to the minus half. Okay. So, U is a matrix of eigenvector for S. So, diagonalize S, SD consists of all the eigenvalues, diagonal elements construct S d to the power minus half and back transform. Once you do, do this, then this matrix, this equation can be written in terms of normalized matrix, a normalized basis. So, that becomes your F prime C prime as C prime E. Remember that this matrix was F C equal to S C E where this E is again a diagonal matrix consisting of the eigenvalues epsilon i. So, you get F prime C prime equal to C prime E and F prime is x dagger F x and what was C prime? C prime was x inverse C, right or C equal to x C prime. So, this gives you the strategy to solve the entire SCF iteratively, of course, iteratively, but every time after you get the S, every time you construct the F matrix from either the coefficients or the charge density bond order matrix, you reconstruct F prime, diagonalize from C prime, you get back C, then reconstruct P, reconstruct F from this expression, go back to F prime and then again re-diagonalize and keep doing it. So, I hope that flow should be very clear to you how, how to do that and then you get eventually the convergence test is also done over the P matrix. So, the coefficient uh, these are basically a convergence in the coefficients. So, if you take the matrix elements of P matrix element by element take the different square if the total sum is less than certain preset value, then it has converged. Okay. So, that is basically the entire Hartree Fock. Before you go forward to analyze little bit about the charge density bond order matrix. I also mentioned that there is another orthogonalization procedure, which is this is a symmetric orthogonalization. The other one is called the canonical orthogonalization. So, it is important to note what is a canonical orthogonalization. So, I will just spend a few minutes on that. So, for canonical orthogonalization, we use x as u s d to the power minus half, that is it. So, you do exactly the same, you first diagonalize s, construct s d, construct s d to the minus half, but just do a transformation with u. 
So the difference is that here we did u u dagger, here you stop with just this. Obviously, it is not symmetric as you can see because s to the minus half was symmetric because s was a symmetric matrix. We have lost the symmetry that is why it is called canonical but it is sometimes convenient particularly when there are this linear dependence that we are discussing that sum of the eigen, eigenvalues of s becomes 0. In that case, this is uh, convenient. So, x equal to u sd to the power minus half. I hope you can show that this x also satisfies this condition. Okay, I hope you can show. If I ask you to show, you should be able to show, right? How? Difference is that here is s to the minus half was u sd to the power minus half u dagger, right? X is the canonical transform, canonical orthogonal license. Loved in, this is loved in. U S D to the power minus of U dagger in loved in. So now we are proposing a canonical X, which is just U S D to the power minus of. So I hope you will be able to show this, that X dagger S X is still identity. Yeah, of course, you have to substitute. <coughs> so, it is very easy to show, right? Is it clear to everybody? But first, first get convinced that this satisfies this. Otherwise, it cannot be an orthogonalization x, right? So, that I hope you can all see because x dagger is adjoint of this. So, first sd to the power minus half will come, then u dagger will come then s will come, then u will come and u dagger s u is already s d. So, you have s d to the power minus half s, s d, s d, s d to the power minus half. So, this you will actually get s d to the power 0. So, x dagger s x will actually become s d to the power minus half u dagger. So, that is your x dagger. Then you have s, then you have x which is u s d to the power minus half. So, this gives you s d to the power minus half s d s d to the power minus half. So, that is s d to the power 0. So, that is identity. Okay. So, both of them give the same. So, these are this is a second uh, orthogonalization that is very often also done and is sometimes preferred uh, simply because of the following reason that if I have some of this s d very very small, some of the eigenvalues then the way to do it is that you reorder this in the steps of from higher to the lower ones and just the lowest ones you simply eliminate. So, you reconstruct a new s d to the power minus half which now has less number of uh, elements. Let us say you have total m number of elements and small k are 0 or close to 0 then you have m minus small k number of elements and then you transform this. So, you get then a matrix which is actually a rectangular matrix, but you do not use the rest of them. You have only a columns m minus k. So, you just use only that part of the matrix to transform and do the rest of the jobs. So, that is why this is easy. In this case, it is complicated because you have both u and u dagger. When I do that, if I would have done the same thing here, you have both u and u dagger and then again it will transpose to give you the full matrix. So, that would have been little bit more complicated where here because the right u dagger is not there, the it is easy to actually use this by reordering. So, that is why uh, the this is more preferred. You know, again it is a very technical thing. Most of the time we do not have linear dependence and basis. So, uh, it, this, this, this point is irrelevant in all such cases. So, you can actually use any one of them. And <coughs> I prefer this simply because it is symmetric to you know it looks, uh, looks nice that you have both here you have you have on one side u dagger it does not have another side. So, but otherwise it is very similar. So, you have to do the diagonalization of capital S in the beginning and then construct this. I will ask you a very small proof do a practice problem that all the eigenvalues of S are positive. There is something I have not worried about right now. If they are not positive, it is very hard to take inverse square root of S d. I hope you appreciate because there is a negative number, how do you take inverse square root, right? So, so 
you can't take a you know square root of inverse number you don't a negative number so the point is that all these sd elements which i have not mentioned all the elements of sd are actually positive which means one can show that the eigen values of s are positive Please uh, do this as a practice problem. This problem is also given in Zabo and Aslund. Please note that the Zabo and Aslund is a reference textbook. Okay. So, this problem is already there in Zabo and Aslund. Hint is given how to solve. Okay. Please see the hint and practice it because this is one important piece in this whole construction that the eigenvalues of S are positive which I have eliminated but it is easy to see, okay. So, yes, huh? I had already given no? modern quantum chemistry I think. This is our reference book incidentally except for the symbols, you know symbols may be different. Modern quantum chemistry by Zabo. And Oslo. Attila Zabo and Neil Oslo, but anyway, should be able to find it. It is downloadable, I think. This book has, is downloadable, and I think many of them have already downloaded. That is my reference book. So, many of the problems are actually given there. So, this is something that is already given. Hint is given, but not the solution, entire solution. So, please try to think and do it. All right. Let me come back to the analysis of this P matrix. Before that, I think let me also tell you, all right. So, when you read, please remember that the uh, Zabo and Oslo symbols are different. For example, the spin orbitals are chi, but the molecular orbitals are psi instead of phi, and the basis is phi instead of A. So, Mulliken notation is very simple interchange the second and third index, very simple. So, to, you can always go back and forth. Okay. So, that apart I mean most of it is uh, most of it is from that textbooks. Okay. 